Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief program. Today, we've got some exciting updates from around the region. First up, the long-awaited Shenzhen Zhongshan Mega Link is set to open in June, promising to cut the drive time between the two cities from 2 hours to under 30 minutes. This 24 km bridge and tunnel connector is a significant part of the Greater Bay Area's infrastructure plan and is expected to help balance the economy between the eastern and western parts of the Pearl River Delta. Next, Hong Kong's very own Adam Chillingworth is making waves in the swimming world. He's expected to break a city record and qualify for the Paris Olympics at the Set Kali Trophy meet in Rome. With just 1.5 seconds to shave off his current time, his coach is confident that hard work and favorable conditions will see him through. Lastly, starting next year, Hong Kong visitors to Europe will need to apply for travel authorization under the European Travel Information and Authorization System, ESHIS. The process is straightforward and aims to enhance security without disrupting travel plans. The authorization will be required for entry to 30 EU countries, with a small fee of 7 euros, but it's free for those under 18 and over 70. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories. South China Morning Post After seven years of meticulous construction, the Shenzhen Zhongshan Mega Link, an ambitious infrastructure project in the Greater Bay Area, is set to open by the end of June. This 24 km marvel, which includes two bridges, two artificial islands, and a 6.8 km undersea tunnel, aims to bridge the economic gap between Shenzhen's tech hub and Zhongshan's traditional manufacturing base. The Lingdingyang Bridge, a key feature, is the world's largest offshore steel box girder suspension bridge. By reducing travel time from 2 hours to less than 30 minutes, the project is poised to significantly enhance connectivity and economic integration within the region, which already contributes 11% of China's GDP. Shenzhen, home to tech giants like DJI and Tencent, is expected to benefit from this enhanced connectivity, while Zhongshan anticipates an influx of businesses seeking more affordable operational costs. South China Morning Post Beginning next year, visitors from 60 visa-exempt territories, including Hong Kong, will need travel authorization to enter the EU under the European Travel Information and Authorization System, ESHAS. Designed to bolster EU internal security, ESHAS will screen potential risks before travel, streamlining border crossings. The system, similar to those in the US, Canada, and Australia, will require applicants to provide personal details and travel history, with the process taking just a few minutes online. The authorization, valid for three years and multiple entries, will cost seven euros, but is free for those under 18 or over 70. Additionally, non-EU nationals will soon need to register biometric information under the Entry-Exit System, EES, aimed at preventing document fraud and tracking movements within the Schengen area. Despite these new measures, the EU assures that travel will remain straightforward for Hong Kongers, emphasizing the importance of people-to-people -people exchanges. South China Morning Post Hong Kong swimmer Adam Chillingworth is aiming to break a city record and qualify for the Paris Olympics at the Set Kali Trophy meet in Rome. Competing alongside teammates like Siobhan Hawhey, Chillingworth hopes to surpass his personal best in the 200-meter breaststroke to meet the Olympic qualifying time of 2 minutes and 9.68 seconds. Coach Sonny Trigg is optimistic, citing Chillingworth's rigorous training and favorable conditions in Rome. Chillingworth, who holds the Hong Kong record at 2 minutes and 11.16 seconds, has shown promising performance, even setting a national record after a grueling altitude camp. The Set Kali event, known for its fast pool, is seen as an ideal setting for achieving Olympic standards. Trigg, who has been instrumental in training Hong Kong swimmers, believes that the timing of the trials and the tapering period will enhance Chillingworth's performance, providing a final push towards Olympic qualification. South China Morning Post
Hong Kong is set to revolutionize its stock market operations by keeping the stock and futures markets open during severe weather conditions like typhoons and rainstorms, starting from September 23. This change, announced by Chief Executive John Lee Kachiu, aims to bolster the city's competitiveness as a global financial hub. Unlike the current practice where trading halts during extreme weather, the new policy will allow continuous trading, ensuring that investors can trade stocks and derivatives, and the government can collect substantial stamp duties. The Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, and other financial regulators have prepared the city's banks and stockbrokers for this shift, emphasizing the readiness of digital trading systems. While physical branches will remain closed during such weather events, online trading and digital banking will facilitate uninterrupted market activities. This move is expected to benefit investors, brokers, and the government financially, with the market turnover anticipated to remain consistent with normal trading days. Nikkei Asia Chinese authorities are systematically renaming villages in Xinjiang to erase Uyghur cultural and religious heritage, according to a report by Human Rights Watch and Uyghur Jelp. The report highlights that about 3,600 villages have undergone name changes between 2009 and 2023, with many names replaced by those reflecting Communist Party ideology. Examples include AQ Meshjit, renamed to Tuanjia Cun, Unity Village, and Dutter, changed to Hongqi Cun, Red Flag Village. These changes are part of broader efforts to suppress Uyghur identity, with names related to religious figures, historical leaders, and cultural activities being targeted. The renaming initiative intensified between 2017 and 2019, coinciding with increased repression in the region, including the establishment of internment camps. The Chinese government denies allegations of abuse, framing its actions as measures to safeguard national unity and security. Despite international criticism and concerns over human rights violations, China continues to defend its policies in Xinjiang. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's property consultancy CBRE is tapping into the mid-market property segment with a new sub-brand, Value Properties, aimed at catering to tenants seeking smaller office spaces. This initiative comes as the city's economy faces sluggish demand and high interest rates. Ada Fung, head of advisory and transaction services at CBRE Hong Kong, noted that the majority of recent office leasing deals involve spaces under 5,000 square feet value properties will focus on non-grade A office spaces, initially targeting SMEs, startups, and potential tenants from mainland China and overseas. The new platform, valueproperties.com.hk, will offer online property searches and short video clips of available spaces, enhancing accessibility for occupiers. CBRE plans to expand its broker force to support this segment, leveraging its market expertise to capture demand for non-premium commercial properties. This strategic move positions CBRE to dominate a niche market, providing tailored services and market intelligence to smaller occupiers. South China Morning Post, Crystal Zhang, a high-end restaurant owner in Guangzhou, was enticed by an 8,000 yuan subsidy to trade in her old petrol-fueled Mercedes-Benz for a new neo-electric vehicle. While the subsidy played a role in her decision, Zhang has no interest in Beijing's trade-in for home scheme, as she prefers to sell properties for cash to maintain her restaurant's cash flow. This sentiment reflects a broader trend among China's middle class, who are cautious about incurring new debt due to economic uncertainties. Despite the government's efforts to stimulate consumption through subsidies, the response from the middle class has been lukewarm, with many preferring to save rather than spend. Analysts like Gavin Chiu from the Royal Historical Society highlight that the current economic environment, marked by high household and local government debt, is not conducive to the success of such schemes. The property market, in particular, faces challenges with oversupply and declining prices, making it difficult to incentivize new home purchases through trade-in programs.
The Globe and Mail, amid economic crises in China and Japan, enterprising stock pickers have identified three promising Hong Kong-based companies with attractive free cash flow yields, Plover Bay Technologies, Perfect Medical Health Management, and Cato, Hong Kong, Holdings. Plover Bay, a global technology company, excels in cost-effective networking solutions and stands to benefit from trends like IoT and 5G. Perfect Medical dominates Hong Kong's non-invasive cosmetic procedure market, securing recurring revenues through a prepayment model. Cato, operating elderly care homes, boasts strong financials and growth potential in a market driven by high life expectancy and limited supply. However, investors should be cautious of potential pitfalls such as capital allocation issues, rapidly shifting industry landscapes, and low corporate governance transparency. These companies exemplify the opportunities and challenges in Hong Kong's business environment, requiring diligent management and strategic focus to maintain their competitive edge. South China Morning Post, the Biden administration has warned China to halt exports supporting Russia's war efforts in Ukraine or face further actions. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken emphasized that ensuring transatlantic security is a core U.S. interest, highlighting Chinese companies' significant contributions to Russia's defense industrial base. These contributions include machine tools, microelectronics, optics, UAV and cruise missile technology, and nitrocellulose, which are crucial for Russia's weapon production. Despite sanctions, China's trade with Russia has surged, with Russia becoming China's sixth-largest trading partner. The U.S. Treasury Department has already sanctioned numerous Chinese entities for their roles in supporting Russia's military, and further actions are likely, especially with upcoming NATO discussions. Blinken pointed out that China's support has enabled Russia to sustain its war efforts, and the U.S., along with its allies, is determined to curb this support to pressure Russia into ending the conflict. Yahoo U.S. A great suit is a timeless investment, offering elegance and sophistication, but navigating the world of fine tailoring can be daunting. Whether you're spending $500 on an off-the-rack suit or five figures on a bespoke ensemble, there's quality to be found at every price point if you know what to look for. The key to a great suit is the fit, and a perfectly tailored $1,000 suit will always surpass an ill-fitting $5,000 one. In the entry-level range under $1,000, you can find respectable options from brands like J.Crew and Todd Snyder, though you may need to be wary of high markups from legacy brands. In the mid-range, $1,000 to $4,000, your options expand to include superior fabrics and more handwork, enhancing durability and breathability. High-end suits starting at $4,000 offer the best materials and craftsmanship, often involving bespoke tailoring for a perfect fit. Vintage suits are also a fantastic option, often offering better quality and uniqueness at a lower price. Telegraph Thailand has made history by approving a landmark same-sex marriage equality law, becoming the first country in Southeast Asia to recognize same-sex marriage. The bill, passed by an overwhelming majority in the Senate, is expected to come into force by the end of the year after receiving royal endorsement. Activists and couples, like Matt Cha Fornan and her partner, are eagerly planning their weddings, celebrating the recognition of their rights and acceptance in society. The legislation changes the definition of marriage to two individuals, granting LGBTQ plus couples rights such as medical consent, tax benefits, adoption, and inheritance. This move positions Thailand as a relative haven for the LGBTQ plus community in the region, inspiring hopes for similar changes in neighboring countries. Celebrations erupted outside Parliament with rainbow flags and a drag show, marking a significant milestone in the fight for social rights and equality. South China Morning Post Christine Lee, a UK-based lawyer branded a Chinese spy by MI5, claims the politically motivated decision has destroyed her life, leaving her a prisoner in her own home. In January 2022, 
MI5 issued an alert alleging Li's involvement in political interference activities on behalf of China, which she vehemently denies. Li is now suing the spy agency, arguing it acted unlawfully and without due process. The alert has severely damaged her reputation, career, and personal life. Amid deteriorating UK-China relations, Li's case has become one of the most high-profile instances of espionage accusations. She claims the alert was a diversionary tactic to distract from the political troubles of then-Prime Minister Boris Johnson. MI5 maintains that the alert was necessary for national security. The tribunal will deliver its judgment at a later date, focusing on whether MI5 had the authority to issue the alert and if it breached Lee's human rights. <music> Yahoo US, the retail industry has taken the lead in deploying generative AI, outperforming other sectors despite global investment downturns. According to LucidWorks' second annual Generative AI Global Benchmark study, the retail sector has seen significant financial gains from AI adoption, with nearly half of retailers reporting increased revenue and cost savings. This is a stark contrast to the pre-pandemic era when retail lagged in technology investments. The study, which surveyed over 2,500 business leaders, found that while only 25% of planned AI projects are fully implemented across industries, retail is the front-runner in both deployment and financial benefits. However, the rapid adoption comes with concerns, including spikes in security, accuracy, and transparency issues. Notably, the cost of AI implementation has surged, with 43% of respondents citing it as a major concern in 2024, up from 3% in 2023. Despite these challenges, retailers continue to innovate, driven by the need to enhance customer experiences and stay competitive. South China Morning Post, D.B. Yuan Poon Sukhan, principal of Confucian Taixing Primary School in Wang Taixin, has denied that a dispute over a privatization plan reflects management issues, as suggested by education authorities. The Education Bureau has intervened, appointing managers to ensure satisfactory governance after the Confucian Academy, the school's sponsoring body, announced plans to turn the subsidized school into a private institution by 2026-27. Poon and six other school managers claimed they were not properly consulted about the plan. The principal welcomed the Education Bureau's involvement but stressed that the role was unrelated to daily management. Poon highlighted the lack of consensus and transparency in the decision-making process, accusing the Confucian Academy of refusing to hold open discussions. The dispute escalated when the supervisor, William Tong Wailuan, attempted to expedite the transition without adequate consultation, leading to confusion and minimal parent turnout at a crucial meeting. The governing council has sought legal assistance to resolve the issue, emphasizing the need for clear communication and proper governance. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong students have scored below average in creative thinking in the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, trailing behind top-ranked Singapore. Despite excelling in core subjects like reading and maths, Hong Kong's 15-year-olds fell short in generating, evaluating, improving, and communicating ideas. Professor Hao Kit Tai, National Project Manager of Hong Kong PISA 2022, described the results as a wake-up call, urging a shift in classroom attitudes towards creativity. The study revealed that Hong Kong students performed best in expressing ideas through writing but struggled with scientific problem-solving and visual expression. Gender disparities were also noted, with girls outperforming boys. However, Hong Kong ranked first in education equity among higher-performing jurisdictions, indicating minimal impact of socioeconomic background on student performance. The Education Bureau highlighted this as evidence of the city's high-quality, equal education opportunities. Hao suggested that fostering open-minded exercises like brainstorming could enhance creativity, contrasting with the traditional, practical approach prevalent in Hong Kong classrooms. Thank you for tuning in. 
The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.